Welcome for friends, um, Fender Stratocaster made in China. I never knew about Chinese Fenders until this one came in. Modern player series made in China in for a refret. Remove a knot, as I remove a knot this area all paggered and chips. I've had to glue this back in. Uh, made a good job of that. We'll talk about refretting this and removing the frets. We talked to a couple of luthier friends of mine um, because I want to know if I was being picky on not doing fret level or what. So we had a discussion about what sort of height we're looking at with frets before we consider a refret rather than a fret level. And we've agreed that when, once we get down to about 0.8 millimeters, which these are at, and they've got grooves in there, if you remove material from me, you're gonna to drop to 0.6. It's too low to be crowning the frets. So we're absolutely right going for a refret on this one. Notice a couple of chips here and there. There's a chip right here which I'll be fixing with epoxy later. Going to remove the frets with heat, as I normally do. This being a modern fender, they shouldn't be knocked in sideways, they should have just been pressed in downward, so it should be a little bit easier to remove. But to stop chipping, I bought a new gadget or a new tool. On one of the rare occasions I've been back to Stumac, and these are, they're called chip stops, or chip stoppers. And what you do is there's two different thicknesses here, 0 0.01, 0 0.02 of an inch. So 100 of an inch and 200 of an inch. And what you do is, you basically, as you're moving a fret, you slide this into the fret underneath, and what you do is lift the fret out above this, so it will stop the chips coming out with it, supposedly. I'm hoping that works, because it's uh, fixing chips is a long-winded affair. I'm going to go with this one, with 0.21, because it's thicker. So hopefully that works okay. You'll find out with me, because I'm going to video this. Um, so I've got that on the case. Also, something we have to be careful of, we're removing the frets on this is we don't remove them bits of lacquer at the edge so we've got to be really really careful when lifting them out chances are these bits on the edges will stay there and i'll end up sawing through them later um it's just a better way to do a refret hopefully i'm not going to go into the lacquer as well when i refret this later because we have to file all down this edge and i'm normally very very careful once i start hitting the lacquer i stop filing and i finish by hand it makes it a much more long-winded affair but it's worth doing it's all about the end result with this um, it is a very long-winded affair doing a refret it's like I've done refrets in, in four hours but only ever on my own guitars and that was on guitars where the finish didn't matter I've just got them in filed them got them in leveled them and gone off and played it I did that on a, on a 70 pound guitar I had once it's not something but I wasn't going for records or anything I wasn't going for a great job it was just to see how quick I could do one uh, you don't do things like that when you're doing guitars like this. There's another chip there, by the way, where the guitar's been knocked just there. We'll see if we can fix that up as well. You always notice these things when you're looking closer. So I'm going to crack on with this. Tape round the edge just when we file into this later, uh, this part. We don't take any wood from the headstock itself. Once we start hitting into that tape, we want to get a little bit careful because we want to go as close to the edge of this guitar without taking lacquer or anything off. So all little precautions. There are some divots in the wood. Uh, a little bit of a shame for a guitar so new. You can feel it there. I'm not going to fix that. I'm just going to lightly sand the fingerboard once I've got all the frets out. Because there's not a lot of material there. I don't, remove, don't want to be removing any material uh, once I've got the frets out. But I do want to make sure the radius is uniform all along the length of the guitar. I have did pretty much the same job as I've done, I did on my Kramer, which was a made in Japan affair, with only a thin piece of rosewood there. Um, but we'll show you all these things when we get to them. There's wear on the frets from, basically from the 11 down, there's wear on the frets, some more, more warm than others. This one's really quite warm. That's not so bad. This one's really quite warm. This is very worn. Um, no point, this one's worn as well, so we're not replacing them, we're whizzing them all out, we're going to refret the whole lot. So more expensive, but in the long run it's worth doing because you're going to get a lot more um, a lot more mileage out of the guitar. We're going to go with harder fret wire, uh, we're going to go with the same size stuff but a little bit higher. This is 2.7 wide, I'm going in with 2.7 wide, uh, but I'm going with 1.2 millimetre high. This would have been maybe around about 1.11 millimetre. Once I've got the 1.2 mil height in there, when we get to levelling, we'll probably take 0.1 off. So we'll give a height of maybe 1.1 millimetres. You will alter the feel slightly of the guitar, but it will give you a lot more age in the frets because it means somewhere down the line, 
in the future, maybe 10 years or so, or 15 years, depending on how we a player or, we can level those frets. So you're going to get between 20 and 30 years out of these new frets. So at the end of the day, it's really worth doing. A uh, couple of little chips here. Nothing too, too much to worry about. We can sort that out with a bit of glue and wood dust later. Um, so that's it. I'm going to crack on with this. I think this is the beginning of part two of the video. Um, I'm going to crack on. I'm going to get my solder iron out. I'm going to get ready to use one of these. A chip stopping tool. Um, and you're going to come on this journey with me. So, um, you know, if it messes up, you're going to see it mess up with me. If it works, you're going to see it work with me. So that is it for now. I'll be back. Um, oh, one more thing before we go. New nut. I had to wait for a new nut. Flat bottom on this. With fenders normally have a curved nut. This is a flat bottom one. So I've had to go and order this special bone nut. It's a little bit wider than the groove or the slot itself, which means I'll have to thin this a little bit. Really easy to do this, get a flat surface, stick some double sided sticker tape, some sandpaper on there and just rub it across until you get the thickness you desire. Been easier on a belt sander but I don't have a belt sander so we use what we have at our disposal. So that's it for now, I'm just going to log off just for a minute or two, I'm going to get prepared, I'm probably going to have some lunch, I'm going to get prepared and I'll come back and show you how we go on with removing these frets um, in due course. So here we are, I've got the fingerboard. Or the neck, should I say, got it clamped to my setting up desk. You see we've got a piece of wood, a big piece, five mil thick piece of felt between the wood um, and the felt and the guitar. So clamped nicely tight on there. I've already removed one fret. I've slightly adapted the soldering iron. I used to keep the frets, I've made the groove uh, a lot wider and a lot more smooth. And all I'm gonna do is, I've taken one fret out um, it came out really, really easily. Here it is. Uh, I've got one chip, uh, but I managed to have glued it in straight away with super glue, really thin super glue. Uh, I'm going to show you how we go about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up the fret. There's a knack to this. I'm learning this myself to use this. Um, the most difficult part of removing a fret is nip it, getting a grip on the end with the uh, fret pullers. The normal pair of pliers, grand flat at the end. Uh, which puts a, puts a 500% cost on top. I think it's cost about 10 quid. Ground flat at the end there so we can just get under the fret. I'll show you that in a minute. Get a bit of smoke there. It means we're getting some heat in there. We're not trying to melt anything. All we're going to do is we're going to remove the fret. So we're, we're softening the glue. That's all we're doing. Should be warming off there. So all we're doing is melting the glue. That's enough. I'm going to grab the fret at this end, get as close to the edge as possible. Just lift this edge. There you go, we lift it straight up. What I'm going to do with the fret chip stopper, if you can see, we're going to slide it under. We're going to slide it under the fret like so. And that's it. And we're just going to slide in as we pull the fret. Can you see? Tiny, tiny chip just there. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. That is a lot better than frets normally come out. All we're going to do is, with it, we was a little chip, we're just going to dob a little bit of super glue, tiniest bit of super glue. There you go, just a little bit over there like that. And I can come over and with a screwdriver, just dob it in place, press it down, and there you go, that chip's sorted already straight away. So there you go, so I'm going to do another one wire here. Turn that fret, don't worry, that fret's going out here. Two frets out, 19 to go I believe. Anything sticking up, we'll, we'll file down later. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Uh, I don't normally film everything, but people have requested I show more stuff, so here you go. See that chip there, it's a little bit sticking up, we're not bothered about that, we can file that down later. Quite like this. Chip stopper. One 
one C frets are all out. I've got a new a fret depth gauge we can place in there. And if I need to cut them a little bit more, we'll cut into them. Try and keep the radius. There you go. And look at that. No chipping. Always oh, one tiny chip. That's odd. That's brilliant. That has, I've never had them come out this easy before with such little chipping. Really, really pleased about that. This chip works a little bit raised here. Scrape that in. There you go. Fixed. Absolutely beautiful. Like I say, we'll re radius the fingerboard. I'm going to do one more on camera. So, letters. Keep the fret, start the centre, you'll be alright. Old soldering iron this, 40, uh, 40 watt, gets too hot for soldering, so I bought a uh, solder, another solder station. This is absolutely fine, it wasn't expensive, it's absolutely fine for removing frets. All I do is carved into the um, tip there, bent it over. I just use this for removing frets now. Any chipped areas we've got like that, little chip there, we'll fill in with a little bit of wood dust, rosewood dust, and a little bit of super glue later. And we're going to uh, we're going to sand the radius on the fingerboard again anyway, just re-radius it slightly. We're moving as little material as possible. I think we're warming up there. Nice and steady. Sometimes you need to get a little good grip and a good nip in there. So here we go. Again, keep my arm out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. Push in as I lift the fret. There you go, it's four out. Absolutely minimal chip in there, it's absolutely brilliant. It'll come out really, really nice. So I'm going to get on, I'm going to do the rest of the fingerboard. Um, I'll come back and show you the fingerboard uh, when I've got all the frets out, but rather than just film everything, there's no point in filming everything now. Take my word for it, there's hardly any chipping in here at all. There's one tiny chip where a piece has come out there. There was one over here I glued back in, and there's one there I glued back in. That is, this is absolutely, this is coming out really, really nice. Um, the edges, absolutely fine. Beautiful. I'll come back later to show you where we are. And here we are, and that must have taken, I don't know, probably the best part of an hour, but that is probably the best I've ever done at removing frets. The least amount of chipping ever. There's hardly anything there. There are uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five at this end. Five at this end, I'll explain why there's five at this end in a minute. And at this end there is, that one needs attention. One, two, probably three at this end where we need a little bit of attention. The reason why, I'll tell you why there's five at this end, I don't know what it is, I don't know if I use more glue or what, but at this end from 14 fret onwards up here, they're always more difficult to get the frets out. It's like maybe they use more glue, I don't know. Um, Maybe the heat of your body, because you, this isn't next to your body. The heat of your body over time sets the glue harder and tougher. I don't know. But it's thinking about. Um, this end always comes out pretty easy anyway. But look at that. There's hardly any chipping there at all. So one of the times, I'd say, here, yeah, Stumac have actually got it right with these um, chip stoppers. I actually use, prefer to use the thicker one, 0.02. Uh, inch is so than, than the flimsier one. Um, so I still have actually got it right. We've not built a uh, tool that's just a load of garbage and for the sake of it, this is actually a good tool. I did find though in hindsight, once I'd ordered these, these were about nine quid. The shipping was about 11 quid, so it cost me 20 quid. To me, absolutely worth it, but you can go and buy these from Guitar and Woods in Portugal for, uh, for a lot 
well, probably half the price. So you probably go for about nine quid delivered from there. I go to Guitars and Woods quite a lot for tools. I also go to Tone Tech. Is it Tone Tech Luthier Tools in England? Yeah, I go there as well. So really pleased with how that's come out. I will get on with um, cutting these slots. I'm going to radius. The, well, next I'm going to re-radius the board. Uh, first, though, I will fill in these chips. Uh, we'll get some um, Teflon strips in between these frets so we can fill without the glue falling into the slot. We'll cut the slots and we'll prep this ready for the reprep. Prepping is also a lot of work. I will do the prepping, prepping in this part of the video, part two. Um, so you've got that to look forward to in this part. Once we've done the prepping and got it ready for refretting, we'll move on to part three of the video. Um, I'm going to move on to something else for a short while. So I'll come back with an update on this in due time. Um, make sure you stay tuned and I'll be back again soon. Right, good morning fret friends. Here we are with the Modern Player Series Strat Refret. Um, I'm going to prep my neck, and by prepping my neck, I mean what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand the fingerboard. I've got a radius block, nine and a half inch radius block that fits the radius. We're going to put some sandpaper on there, maybe about 200 grit, maybe even less, 160. And we're just going to rough over the top to smooth it all off. Then we'll finish off with some, maybe some 240 or maybe even some 300. Uh, what I'm also thinking of doing is I've not cut through the edge of the binding, it's not, well, it's not bound. I was thinking of maybe just installing the frets on the inside of where this guitar is still sealed, because that way we're not going to chip the lacquer anywhere. And how I'd do that is, I would take a fret nipper, or nibber, and I'll move and snip off the edge. Should done like that. And what that does is to the fret, it gives us that end cut off. You see a bit of tank cut off. And what we do then is, when we put install the frets, we install that inside and we'll, it could go and create an overlap here but we won't be damp, we won't be going through um, the edge of the wood or the edge of the fingerboard. Something I might do, it's going to put another couple of hours on the job and it's not something I've priced up and uh, mentioned so it's not something I can add on to, um, to the job now so it could be at my expense, I'd be doing that myself. Um, I may do it, I may not, it'd be good practice to do it on this, just so good for when I've got the classic vibe of the 62 or the 62 reissued Telecaster to do later, the one big long into Mike Newman, I could actually do this same thing. Uh, it could just make the job neater in the long run. So I'm going to think about that. And that's something I need to do then is to make sure the fret slots are deep enough. And I want to do that. Well, I bought this tool and it's got lines on it. And what you do is you place this in the fret slot and if the lines are buried, you know your fret slot's deep enough. Um, you've got all different gauges on there. Seven and a quarter to nine and a half inch is there. So I'll take it, I'll show it in the fret slot like so. And if the line's buried, which in this case it is, the fret slots are deep enough. So I'm going to assume that the fret slots are all deep enough because the lines are buried in all of them. I've not decided whether I'm going to cut through. I normally do cut through these edges, but I don't want to cause any chipping to the fingerboard because it means I've got to fill it on. There's already a big chip here where it's been knocked off its stand some, well, before it got to me sometime. That was there when I got the guitar, so I don't know how that's happened. Um, you know. So I don't know yet. It all depends. First, I'm going to radius the fingerboard. I'm going to take some probably 160 grit paper, bag it on the radius block, and we're just going to sand just the top off, just to smooth it off. And like I said, we'll finish off with some 240 or some 300. So I'm going to get the fingerboard prepped. Uh, any chip in, chips I've got, I'm going to fill the chips in. There's about six or seven on the whole guitar. I'm going to get them filled in. Once that's all done, I will come back and we'll decide whether we're going to cut through these edges. I normally do cut through these slot edges there. I mean, there's one crack there, quite a bad crack. Probably make my job a lot easier doing it that way. Uh, but I'll think, I'll think on, I'll think about that and uh, I'll come back and let you know. So I'm going to crack on with this, uh, get the fingerboard ready for get, taking on the new frets and um, I'll come up with a mini update before we wrap this part of the video up. Uh, I think that's all I've got to tell you there. Oh yeah, we've also made sure that the fingerboard is, you know, you've got to make sure it's absolutely flat before you go sanding anything. Now I've done, I've got a not straight edge on there, there's no gaps anywhere, it's absolutely perfect. Um, 
So we're going to have a flat fingerboard as well. We must always make sure that is the case. I'll be back again shortly with another update. So here we go um, with the China made uh, modern player series Stratocaster refret. Uh, here's the neck all now ready to refret. Filled in all the chipped areas, uh, sanded it all, re-radiused it, cleared all the fret slots and we're now ready to proceed with the refret. Now I was going to do refret today and I've gone and had a look in my drawer at all the fret wire I've got. And the only one I've got for, that is wide enough, or that is good enough for this is I'm going with 2.7mm wide and I thought I had some in stock and I haven't. I've got some Boston stuff in stock which is fine. It's 2.7mm wide uh, but it's too high, it's 1.4mm high. We don't want fret wire that high, I want around about 1mm so I've had to go and order some online. So this is now going... Um, it's going to be put on hold just for a day or two uh, till the fret wire arrives. Regarding the cutting the fret slots, I decided to cut the fret slots, which I did. We got a little bit of chipping on this side. We knew that was going to happen. We're going to fill that in. We'll fill that in with some epoxy once we've done the refret. Um, so you're not going to notice that. Um, absolutely nothing to worry about. I've placed the nut in there. I've just sanded the nut down just so we know it fits. I'm going to remove that when I do the refret. So that's it. Now ready to do the refret on this. Going to wait for the uh, fret wire to arrive. I'm going to put it on hold for a day or two until that happens. So that wraps up this part of the video. Uh, I believe this is part two just about wrapping up. Um, in part three we will proceed with the refret on this guitar. And um, I'll come back and show you how we're going with that when... Uh, when we're able to do it. So till then, um, be well, keep well, look after each other and I'll see you soon.